Hey there, Julian from MemberStack here, and in this video, what I want to do is demystify Wiz for non-developers. So, just a bit of background here, I myself am not a developer. I've probably, like you, learned a little bit of development throughout as I work with no-code tools like Webflow, and I've gotten more familiar with the concepts, but I'm not a developer. If you sit me down and ask me to write my own code without ChatGPT, it's not going to be a fun time. So, I think I can help you understand exactly what Wizd is, how you can learn it, how it works as someone who's just a Webflow developer. So let's get into that right now. The first thing that I want to talk about is what can you actually do with Wiz? Why would you even be using Wiz to begin with? And I want to start by showing you something in a blog from Digidop. And this says, Wiz is to JavaScript what Webflow is to HTML and CSS. This is something that Alex from FinSuite said, and that is super true. If you're familiar with Webflow and how it works with web development, you know that you're not really just clicking a few buttons and building stuff. You're essentially visually developing HTML and CSS. Now, WISD is the exact same thing, but instead it's for JavaScript. So with that being said, the possibilities are endless. And not to confuse you, I'm going to explain it in a bit more detail now. To put it about as simply as I possibly can, WISD allows you to get data from external sources, send data to external sources, and also work with that data on the front end. It's essentially the layer that allows you to turn just a website, that allows you to basically turn this form right here into not just a web form, but something that is going to send data into the place that we store it, which in this case is Supabase, but you can use Airtable, Zeno, Supabase, Firebase, and I assume pretty much anything else. So the next thing that I want to mention is how hard really is Wizd? And I think a lot of Webflow developers got super excited by Wizd, and then they went in to go use it and realized, oh, this is a lot harder than I had actually expected. And as someone who is now in the past couple weeks gone from beginner to having built a full SaaS using it, I think I can explain fairly well how hard WISD really is. And I think to that, my answer would be, it is not very hard, that being said, to initially familiarize yourself with everything and how it works. It is tricky, just because in that sense, it is not too intuitive, because in order to make it powerful, they needed to make it so you're essentially working with JavaScript directly, which can be a little bit scary at the start. But something that I did, and I would recommend that you do as well if you're brand new to Wiz, is to set up a project and try to just do the basics. And what that means is to create, read, update, delete data. So get yourself some data store, maybe Airtable, maybe Zeno, Supabase, whatever it is that you want to use, and then do some project using WISD, which is going to create items in your database, get items from the database, update items in the database, and delete items from the database. That is something that you can start right now, which is pretty simple, and you'll quickly get over that initial learning curve. And then you'll have that aha moment of realizing, oh, I know what I can do with this now. And it comes super, super, super quickly. And that's the great thing about WISD. It's not like just learning JavaScript from scratch where it takes a very, very, very long time to get to that aha moment, to realize everything that you can actually do. It doesn't take very long at all. I would say if you are capable of spending one or two full days just messing around with WISD, you'll get that aha moment. And from there, it just becomes a question of how do I do this little thing that I actually want to do? And the next thing that I want to talk about is the fact that you are actually writing JavaScript within Wiz. It's not just clicking things necessarily. You are directly writing it. And I'm going to show you an example of that right now with one of my actions. Let's go ahead and just do this right here, right here, verify gated content. So what we're trying to do here is check to make sure that this user is well, a user, and they're able to access the app. So what we've done is selected an event. When this request finishes, we'll get more into that after. This is what we want to check. Is the user in a gated page? So perhaps using another platform or using something like Webflow, I guess, they simplify it a little bit. They will ask you, 
what do you want to gate? For example, if you go into member stack as well, it says just write the URL here that you want to gate, which makes it a lot more simple. And this looks kind of complicated. Return n.path.includes bracket slash app. You might be looking at that and thinking, what exactly is this? And that is why I'm saying that initial learning curve of grasping the basics is a little tricky, but after that it becomes simple. So what this means, return is at the start of, I think just about every single action in WISD. And this n.path is something that we got over here. And that just means the current path. Then dot includes this stuff with app. Well, that was done using the help of ChatGPT because like I said, I am not a developer. So I didn't really know how to say, well, if it includes this, if this is in the URL, what do we want to do? So what I did, and I'm going to show you an example right now, right here, is return, I, I asked this question, how can I change this to tell me if the path and one of my variables is not null? And since it's just JavaScript, ChatGPT can figure that out quite well. So as you can see here, it is sending me this, and this works directly within Wiz. I just need to look and say, okay, my variable. So my variable was member ID. So then I would paste that into Wiz, go ahead and find it right here. So get current member. And then right here, we have get current member data. So making sure that that member exists. That is just one example of how this actually works. And what you're doing is you're writing JavaScript. So as long as you can think logically and use ChatGPT to help you with syntax and stuff like that, for example, I didn't know in JavaScript how to say and. I want to make sure this is true and this is true. Well, that's what ChatGPT is here for. So I learned that. And a thing that's really cool is you actually learn this stuff moving forward. So you are becoming a much, much, much better developer by using this. It's not just like using some tool that's abstracted web apps. You're actually just building web apps with a much more logical interface than just writing all of the code from scratch. So the next thing that I want to talk about is using ChatGPT to do what it is that you want to do within WISD because I've said this in a few videos before, but you can't just say, hey, ChatGPT, I want to send data from a form to my database. It's not going to know what to do. You need to figure out and understand the context that you are working within and abstract that for ChatGPT so that it knows what to do. So, so for example, in ChatGPT, this thing that I was doing here, I was trying to check right here to make sure that they're on this page and they're a user. I can't just say to ChatGPT, I wanna check if they're on my settings page and if they're a user because it does not know anything about that. So instead, looked at it and took a step back and said, I need to make sure that this path they're not on, as I've sent here. And one of my variables is not null because ChatGPT knows exactly what to do with that. Then I can take this, copy it, bring it into WISD and just replace my variable. The, the main point here is you need to do two things. One, make ChatGPT aware of your setup. And two, abstract everything into HTML, CSS and JavaScript terms rather than WISD and Webflow terms. If you do that, then ChatGPT is going to be able to help you a lot. And the cool thing is the more you learn, the more you do, the easier it actually gets. And the final thing that I want to explain in this video is pretty much the fundamentals of WISD and what it is, just to kind of get you started and know what you can actually do. So over here, we have these two things, and these are the most important. This is requests and this is action. So I'm gonna explain them in a little bit more detail right here. Requests is anything that you need to do to send data to anything. Maybe it's member stack, maybe it is Supabase, maybe it's Zeno, or anything, getting data from one of these apps, getting data from an API. It's basically just, this is like your traveler, your guy of your family who's sitting there going and saying anything that you want, I'm gonna go and get it. That's what requests is. It's, it's the guy who goes and gets stuff and bring stuff back and send stuff and all that. He is the external actor, let's say. And then once he's come back with 
his stuff, whatever it may be, then we have our friend's actions. And actions are the people, let's say, who do stuff with what we have. So any data that we have within Wiz already that we've gotten from a request that a user has inputted, actions are what work with that. And you have two main different types of actions, and that is element and event. So an element action is doing something interacting with that element. So here, as you can see, what we have is showing an error. So we've added the WISD attribute, which if you didn't know, all you need to do to add a WISD attribute is go in Webflow and add a custom attribute. WISD equals whatever it is that you want to do. So we have that and we have selected our form error. And then we've set set visibility. If this request has requested, that is what we're doing. And that is interacting with this specific element. And then we have event actions. And event actions are basically saying when this event happens, we would like to do something else. So in this case, for example, when the member is gotten from member stack, once WIST has checked and said, okay, this member stack member is logged in, they're here, they exist, they're real. We want to run another request. We want to get member data from Supabase. And that is how event actions work. So yes, this is a simplified version. No, this is not an exact tutorial of here's everything that you can do in WIST and here's how you do it. It's a complicated platform in that sense. A lot of things can be done. But in this video, I hope I explain to you, the either not very experienced or not developer at all, what WISD is, how you can use it, what it can do, and why it is so awesome. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll talk to you soon and have a great day.